Welcome back guys to another 40k facts on the characters of the Warhammer universe. This time we are looking deep into the Primarchs of 40k, Sanguinius to be exact. So without further ado, let's go into the lore of this pretty boy. Fact number one, Sanguinius was bioengineered on Terra to serve as a general in the Emperor's armies. Fact number two, he was stolen in his infancy and was carried across the galaxy by chaotic forces. Fact number three, he landed on the moon known as Bao Segundus. Fact number four, Sanguinius was adopted by a tribe of humans known as the people of the pure blood. Fact number five, the touch of chaos caused a change upon Sanguinius's body. Angelic wings sprouted from his back. Due to this, his life was almost ended when the people of the pure blood found him, but he had a calming, angelic aura about him that saved his life. Fact number six, Sanguinius was a prodigy. His physical skills matured quickly, and as he grew, so did his wings. He was able to fly by the age of one. Fact number seven, due to his genetic makeup, by the age of one, Sanguinius looked and behaved like a man in his prime. He could breathe the poisonous fumes on the moons of Baal, and he was strong enough to crush massive boulders in a single blow. Fact number eight, his feats on Baal Segundus were legendary. He single-handedly killed a band of 100 mutants who were attacking Sanguinius's tribe. His tribe began to worship him as a god. He rallied the remaining humans on Baal and began to push back the mutant tide. Fact number nine, the Emperor's army finally found Sanguinius on the moon and came to bring him back to his ranks. The Emperor attended a gathering where Sanguinius gave a speech that rose the very souls of his tribesmen. The Emperor knew that he had found his son. Fact number 10. Many of the lost Primarchs fought against the Emperor, but when Sanguinius was approached by him, he recognized the Emperor immediately, fell to his knees, and cried. Fact number 11. The Emperor saw that the people of the Pure Blood were fair in mind and in deed. He chose a few warriors to undergo the process of becoming Astartes. And these became the first Space Marines of the Blood Angels chapter. Fact number 12. The Moon of Bal Segundus continues to produce Space Marines and defends the honor of their Primarch leader and the Imperial Troop. Fact number 13. Sanguinius's power armor was made of golden artificial armor. On his breast, a Megdalari ruby was cut into a heart shape and set on a mount of golden flames. This was meant to signify the burning spirit of the Blood Angels. Four more rubies were adorned above this crest. One stood for Terra, one for Baal, and the others for Baal's two moons. On his shoulder, the pelt of a Carnadon a huge snow leopard decorated his armor. Fact number 14. The Primarch Sanguinius and his blood angels fought at the Emperor's side, serving as his honor guard. Fact number 15. Due to their ferocity, the blood angels found their rivals in the World Eaters Legion. Truthfully, the World Eaters were more ferocious due to Sanguinius's influences that quelled the blood angels' bloodlust. Fact number 16, Sanguinius quickly befriended and bonded closest with Horus, Lehman Russ, and Jagtai Khan. Horus even sensed that Sanguinius was pure of heart and had a bond between the Emperor that even Horus couldn't attain. Fact number 17, while many of Sanguinius's Primarch brothers fought the Great Crusade mainly for the joy of battle, Sanguinius fought to secure the golden era of peace and prosperity that the Emperor strove for. In short, the Emperor's dream was Sanguinius's dream. Fact number 18. During the Battle of Melchior, Horus bore witness to Sanguinius murdering one of his own blood angels. When confronted about this, Horus learned that the blood angels had a horrible secret, the Red Thirst. Fact number 19. The Red Thirst is a genetic flaw in the Primarch's gene seed. The Space Marines would become crazed and would lose all humanity in a blind rage. They would kill. 
and bathe themselves in the blood of their slain enemies. Fact number 20. Horace vowed never to speak of the red thirst to anybody, but he was secretly planning on using this information to aid him during the Horace heresy. Fact number 21. Sanguinius was well aware of his flaw, and for many years he kept it secret from the Primarchs and the Emperor, in fear of diminishing the strength of his legion. He thought that perhaps this weakness would be used against him by his fellow Primarchs. He strove to find a cure, but the betrayal of Horus quickly took away all his free time. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you some epic awesome information. Gersh, let them know. We're doing another giveaway for you guys in honor of this guy's individual lore videos and just because you guys are awesome. That's right. So this time you guys have a chance to win. Bam! The XV-88 broadside battlesuit for the Tau Empire could be yours. So what do they have to do to win? Basically comment down below. What do they comment? Comment what you guys want to see. Okay, yeah, do that. Um, and then, when are you going to announce the winner? The winner will be announced in the next lore of the individual 40k characters. Alright, so your next lore video, you're going to announce the winner of this Bam. awesome gift. So, see, this is the type of interruptions you guys want. Now, speaking of interruptions, we will stop this interruption and commence with this video. So don't forget to comment down below what you want to watch next time, and back to the facts. Fact number 22. During the Horus heresy, rumors said that Horus hated and feared Sanguinius more than any other Primarch, and he had the plans to either capture or kill Sanguinius, but none could ever be accomplished. Fact number 23. One of those plans that Horus had to end Sanguinius' life was when he led them into a realm of chaos, a system of demon worlds where they ambushed the Blood Angels. Fact number 24. As the Blood Angels were ambushed by the forces of chaos, a greater demon of corn confronted Sanguinius. His name was Ka Banda. Fact number 25. Ka Banda is recognized as the most powerful and feared bloodthirstier demon. He is a murderous engine of destruction, slaughtering in the name of corn. Fact number 26. The bloodthirstier taunted Sanguinius by revealing the truth about Horus' betrayal. This enraged Sanguinius and he charged at the beast. His rage fueled his superhuman combat abilities and caused severe damage to Ka Banda. Sanguinius tore open the bloodthirstier's chest with his sword but the demon's whip knocked Sanguinius off balance. The demon's axe then crushed Sanguinius to the floor as he fell unconscious. Once his vision cleared, he bore witness to the death of 500 blood angels at the hand of this demon. The psychic backlash was too much for Sanguinius to bear, and he fell unconscious once again. Fact number 27. During the battle for Terra, the Blood Angels became consumed by the Black Rage, another flaw in their genetics while fighting against Chaos Demons. Fact number 28. The Black Rage causes the Marines to feel hatred, anger, and fury. It also increases their strength and stamina in battle. The Death Company is made up purely of those Marines inflicted with the Black Rage. Fact number 29. There have been two known Blood Angels who had overcome the fury of the Black Rage, Sergeant Raffin and Lord Mephiston. Fact number 30, Sanguinius and his legion defended the Imperial Palace during Horus' attack. During this attack, Cabanda appeared once again before Sanguinius, and an epic battle once again commenced. Sanguinius was able to take the upper hand this time and broke the demon's spine over his knee then threw him into the Immaterium. Fact number 31. Sanguinius, along with Rogodorn and the Emperor, teleported into Horus's battle barge in order to commence the final blow against Horus. Fact number 32. Sanguinius was teleported into a different room from Rogol and the Emperor. 
he found himself face to face with Horus. Fact number 33, Horus asked Sanguinius one last time to turn to chaos, but he denied and an epic battle commenced. Fact number 34, Horus had been granted immense chaotic power while Sanguinius was weary from his fight with the bloodthirstier Cabanda. Fact number 35, even though Sanguinius lost his life at the hands of Horus, it was his efforts that caused Horus's armor to weaken enough so that the Emperor's blade could pierce it. Fact number 36. During the Horus heresy, Sanguinius fought against Angron, and he could even keep up with this beast's strength and speed in battle, a feat that only few could do. Fact number 37. It is said that the Sanguinor is an incarnation of Sanguinius's will, coming to aid his people. Fact number 38, Sanguinius is one of the most reveled and praised Primarchs in all of history of Terra. Fact number 39, it is said that if the Emperor is equivalent to God and Horus would be Lucifer, therefore Sanguinius would be Jesus Christ. Fact number 40, Sanguinius's honor guard was known as a Sanguinary Guard. These were the most elite and veteran Astartes of the Blood Angels. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the lore on Sanguinius. If there was any other pieces of lore that I missed out on, please comment down below and let me know what I missed about this awesome character of the 40k universe. I am also still open to take suggestions from other characters you guys want to see, so comment down below as well. As always, like, comment, share this video because everybody needs to know the lore of 40k because you don't just play it, you have to live it. So I have been the Sound Alchemist part of One Mind Syndicate, signing out.